Hello, it's Dini, and today I'm going to be doing an SFF short story discussion on Paper Menagerie by Ken Liu, which was originally published in 2011 in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, and it is the first work of fiction that swept the Hugo, Nebula, and the World Fantasy Award, so it was very well received and very well deserved, I would say, for this short story. And this video is also in collaboration with the Codex Cantina, Crypto and Uno, so please go watch their video. I have it linked in the description as well as a link to the short story so you can read it for yourself. And then also I'm going to have some extra resources linked in the description because this story deals with racism, so I wanted to add some extra resources so you can kind of learn a bit more about racism specifically in the story against Asian Americans and then also considering Black Lives Matter movement is going on right now, I also have a card in the description for that as well. So for this discussion, I'm going to start out with a quick summary of the story, then I'm going to move on into my initial thoughts, and then going on to the discussion questions that the Codex Cantina and I came up with. So also if you would like to participate in kind of discussing this short story and want to make your own video, please go ahead and let us know or just, you know, answer these questions in the comments below. So let's start with the summary, shall we? We follow Jack growing up. He's Asian American and biracial. His mom is Chinese and his dad is American. His mother has a special kind of magic and is able to breathe life into her origami animals. They become Jack's companions as a child, especially a paper tiger. However, as he grows up and faces bullying and racism, he increasingly shuns his mother and her creations in pursuit of being fully American. After his mother dies, Jack's girlfriend finds the hidden box of origami creations. The paper tiger comes back to life and unfurls revealing a handwritten note from his mother. She tells her story in her native language. After reading the heartbreaking letter, Jack refolds it and cradles in his arms the paper tiger filled with his mother's life. So now let's talk about my initial thoughts of this story and I read this book I think back when it actually first came out, I don't remember even how I came across it, but I remember my initial impact. It struck me so hard. I cried so much when I first read it, and even upon rereading it now, I still cry. It is so emotionally pa like it's a it's just chock full of emotion. You feel for these characters. They they really do feel like you could just come across them in life. They are, it's such a small story in a way because you're just following kind of really these two characters, a mother and a son, and watching their relationship. But my gosh, it's, my gosh, it just is, it, you feel it in your heart so much when you read the story. So I think it's so well deserved that it got all of these awards. And it also, Ken Liu um, has a book out it's like a short story collection called the paper menagerie and other stories so i will definitely be looking forward to reading all of his short stories eventually so now we'll go into the different questions that again the codex cantina and i came up with and the first one is talk about the cultural differences between the characters so like the son and the mom and then the husband and wife so first between the son and the mom while the mom, she was born in China and then came to the United States later on. Um, Jack, the son, he, you know, grew up in America and he was very much wanting to be kind of fully American, even though, you know, he was biracial. And when he was a kid, he was able to connect with his mom and really appreciated kind of, you know, the magic that she had with her and connect with her even on a personal level, but unfortunately as he grew up and faced things like racism and bullying in school, that unfortunately kind of severed the connection between him and his mom. So while she stayed connected, or at least tried to stay connected to, you know, her culture and share that with her son, he eventually didn't want that. He wanted to be, you know, in pursuit of the all-American dream. And so then there was this quote, I would hurry on to my room where I could continue my all-American pursuit of happiness. So then Jack also had to deal with racism in his, you know, school life. He was picked on for 
he was picked on and called slurs. So he, unfortunately, because of the world around him, wanted to disconnect from his mom and distance himself from that culture because he was so used to dealing with racist remarks and wanted to just not deal with it. But he, he could never escape it. And then Jack also kind of severed his connection with the origami after the bully in school pretty much called it trash. So then when Jack looked at the origami tiger and everything, he was just like, oh, it's just a piece of wrapping paper. My mom doesn't care. Even though she was showing how much she cared all the time, he just could not get past the racist remarks. And that's so terrible that he had to go through that and that, you know, his father didn't stand up for anyone and that it seemed so prevalent in their community so it was terrible and then even once the mom eventually kind of was forced into assimilation by you know speaking english all the time doing all these different things to try to connect with her son again he no longer wanted to he had moved past that and also a cultural difference when we find out after we read the letter from her at the end. For her, family was such a huge importance because she had to leave her family behind. She had, she was human, you know, she was part of human trafficking as a child, so she had family killed. So for her to have a son who looked like her and everything, she thought it was so important and she was so happy. And she realized the importance of family bonds because, unfortunately, she lost a lot of hers. But the son didn't realize the importance of that until it was far too late. He didn't learn to appreciate his mother and the bonds that he had with her. And even with his father, because he even mentioned that he didn't really know his father as well. So he didn't understand or didn't want to, it seemed, until too late getting to know your family. And then we have the husband and wife. So again, she was born and raised in China and eventually to get out of um, being sold in China, she, she decided to try to get married to an American man and then he happened to be the one to find her in a magazine and married her and brought her over. But that's kind of where their connection seemed to stop when it came to trying to culturally understand each other. There were times where he pretty much left her alone to fend for herself when even, you know, these other women came into their house and he's like, oh, you know, don't worry, she's not rude, she just doesn't speak English. So instead of being there for her and trying to help her, he just kind of like left her alone. He also didn't seem to understand the importance of family. And the fact that the father didn't stand up, he just let them down. So did he really care or was he just not equipped to handle it? It really doesn't matter if he even did care because ultimately the impact was that he failed his wife and son. He let them, he left them alone. He left them to not feel connected to their culture. And he encouraged kind of the assimilation and being like, well, you're in America. And that's not okay either. He didn't teach, you know, his son to respect his mom. He didn't teach himself how to respect his own wife. Even if he did care, he didn't, he didn't really respect them. And then he was also the type of person to say, you know, you're in America. You have to kind of, once Jack was like, speak English, he didn't stick up for his wife. He didn't, you know, couldn't fully meet his son's eyes and tell his son, you know, hey, it's not okay to treat your mother like this. We should all be trying to learn about each other's cultures. He also was kind of like, you know, you're in America, so be American. So now we have this quote that kind of shows how the father and son never really wanted to fully connect with, you know, the mom. And it was this quote, mom looked at him. If I say love, I feel here, she pointed to her lips. If I say I, I feel here, she put her hand over her heart. Dad shook his head. You are in America. So I think this quote really shows how 
despite her being able to speak English, she wanted to fully express herself. And to do that, she needed to do it in her, you know, native language. So she wanted to say love in her native language so that she could really mean it. And it's not like the father and son didn't understand her. They could understand her. They just chose to continually put down her native language and her trying to connect with them on her level. They just kept brushing her aside. But then it was at the end that the son, after reading, you know, her letter in her handwriting in her native language, that he was able to fully know her story fully know the importance to her that family was. Was it too late? Yes. Unfortunately, it was for him. And that's kind of why it had such an impact, I think, on the reader, especially for me, because losing your mom and then finding out after the fact her life story through a letter, how is that not heartbreaking? I, could, I just can't imagine having to go through that, but it was so good that she did eventually, you know, get to write her story, get to connect with Jack. And then because the paper tiger kind of came back to life during Ching Ming, he still got to, you know, hold a little piece of her. And now, hopefully, the story ends, but I think we can kind of guess that moving on, he's going to start practicing some of her culture that he was a part of when he was a, when he was a child, but then kind of lost along the way, so... It's kind of a very heartbreaking but hopeful ending that he will, you know, care for his mom for the rest of his life with that little paper tiger. So the next question is, talk about empathy in the story. What did the boy kind of learn? So like I mentioned, it wasn't until the very end of the story that Jack was able to hear his mother's story in her native language at the very, you know, at the very end. So he learned the importance of connecting and listening instead of just shoving aside and focusing only on himself. He learned to finally care for the mother that he was never there for. He learned a lot from that letter because she was able to say everything that she wasn't able to tell him in life. He was able to learn the hurt that he caused because of his actions. He learned that it's important to listen. He learned that it was important for his mom to connect with him on this level that she had because she had missed out on, you know, so much of her own family life because it was taken away from her when she was a kid. And even in the letter she wrote, you know what the Chinese think is the saddest feeling in the world? It's for a child to finally grow the desire to take care of his parents, only to realize that they were long gone. And if that's not just a knife in the gut of how she felt and just how he now realizes that's what he did. He finally starts to care and it's way too late. And going back to kind of like the cultural differences again, um, taking care of family when they're, when they're aging and everything. If you grow up American, it's not very common, but in Chinese culture it is. So he learned that too late. So really he learned about caring and listening. And I think, although it's sad, I think it's still a hopeful ending in the fact that even we as readers learn the importance of connecting with family, even if it's found family, you know, that's often the case as well, connecting with others, learning about their culture, learning about, you know, their history. That's such an important thing to connect with others and to care about others, you know, learning about them as a full person. Jack, if she was caught up in a fit of coughing and could not speak for some time. If I don't make it, don't be too sad and hurt your health. Focus on your life. Just keep that box you have in the attic with you. And every year at Qingming, just take it out and think about me. I'll be with you always. So even on her deathbed, she was telling Jack, you know, just focus on your life, but still, you know, remember me. Just that one little thing that she wanted was just remember her. And it took him a little while to realize that he just needed to remember his mom and appreciate her. And then also when you get to her final words when he's with her on kind of essentially her deathbed, her words are in her language that she loves him. 
It wasn't in English. She said them in her native language to fully express herself for her final time. An image from years ago flashed into my memory. Mom saying I and then putting her hand over her heart. So then the next question is talk about tradition in the story kind of specifically related to origami. So origami for the mother, she, you know, started out when she was very young. Their family used it both for kind of practical things and then also as a source of joy. So it was an all-encompassing thing for them. It wasn't just a, oh, we do this for this one specific thing. It was throughout their life why it was important to them. So it was a very much a connection to her childhood. That's why she did it when she did come to America, because it still brought her a source of joy then to then share with her son. And then also because she was able to breathe her life into, you know, the origami creatures so that they could, like, run around and play with Jack. Once she passed and he brought out those little, you know, origami creatures on Qingming, they came back to life because he remembered her. Her soul kind of came back so that she could be with him even after she passed. So the fact that origami can connect across the generations with their little bit of power is pretty heartwarming. And the fact that it wasn't just a simple thing, it was, again, practical, showing love, it was just everything for them. So then that kind of discussion connects with the last question that we have, which is talk about the usage of fantasy and magic in this story. So the fact that they breathe life into this origami You know, it's very, it's a very quiet magic, but it's also very powerful because you're breathing your own kind of little bit of soul into this, you know, origami creature so that then that can go out and play with her son, do whatever. It's a little part of her that stays on. And then it also relates to kind of cultural things like Qingming, which is honoring one's ancestors. So again, she passed, but he could honor her with this origami. And then I think that the final kind of sentence, I cradled him in the crook of my arm, and as he purred, we began to walk home. So it kind of is, you know, his mother kind of being like, thank you for reading my story, you know, that purring, and then he cradled his mom's soul and walked home. So I think that's a hopeful ending, if not one that just makes you cry. And even as I've been doing this discussion, I've been like trying not to cry because it is such an emotional story. So again, I absolutely love this story and I think it really teaches you to listen and appreciate those around you for who they are, their past, and not try to sever those connections that they have with their culture, but to really appreciate where they came from. So if you want to do your own video and you know, talk about these questions, please let us know so that we can also watch it or just, you know, discuss in the comments below. But thank you for watching.